Hello and welcome to this week's Superwomen Wellness Connection Channel. My name is Kim Goldtom and I'm a certified master wellness coach as well as the founder of the Empowered Living for Superwomen program. I'm excited to be here today and sharing with you a very special guest. Welcome, Kathy Roman. Hello, everybody. I hope everyone's having a great morning or afternoon whenever you're watching this. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, I am so excited to have you here and to learn more. Um, and for, for those of you who don't know Kathy, she is the owner and founder of Footloose and Cancer Free. So she's going to be sharing with us a little bit about, you know, how this uh, organization came to fruition and, and what she's doing. And then, of course, as you all know, uh, she'll be sharing some wellness tips uh, with us today regarding that. And then there's a few other little pieces. So I'm really excited to hear more about what Kathy has to say. So welcome, Kathy. And I can't wait to hear more about how this uh, Footloose and Cancer Free uh, came to fruition. Yes, yeah, so um, Footloose and Cancer Free is a relatively new idea. Um, I, I guess within the, maybe the last year, it's kind of started to come to fruition. I um, am a cancer survivor, actually October 18th. So it was, um, when was October? A Sunday. Mm. Sunday was my seven years. Um, seven years ago was when I was diagnosed with cancer and it was a, a long battle uh, in the sense, not so much physically. I mean, it was nine months of treatment, which is mm -hmm. a long battle, but it was longer mentally um, than anything because the toll it took on my psyche as far as how I felt about my body and how I was living my life and that constant, uh, what I like to say now is, is leading my life with cancer versus leading with life instead, mm -hmm. where everything was involved around cancer and the cancer treatments and fear of it coming back. And, and I wasn't enjoying my life at my five year anniversary is when I took a trip to the beach for the first time in five years. And I remember, you know, being by the water is like my favorite place in the world. And I just remember sitting there going, wow, I haven't done this in five years. And then it just started dawning on me that I literally put my life on hold for the first five years. And so that's kind of when I started, well, how can I help others to not do that and start living the life that they fought so hard to keep? Yeah. And so that's, that's how it kind of got started. And so I started a blog, Footloose and Cancer Free. And, um, I've been kind of sharing my journey a little bit and just some thoughts and um, it's, it's caused me to be very vulnerable. And so um, it's kind of hit or miss as far as when I would post things because it was very emotional for me to kind of open up in this way. So, but now I'm, I'm really feeling the calling um, to really launch it and, and make it to be this, this community of um, cancer survivors or what I like to say cancer thrivers um, and and kind of go from there. Wow that's incredible and so since we are living a lot of um, our lives in a, a virtual capacity this uh, this season of our life is your uh, you know program your organization something that's open for anybody regardless of where they live or how does that work? Yes, everything will be in a, in a virtual format because the idea is that I want to be able to help anyone no matter where they are. Mm. Uh, there is a lot of value in in-person support and there's a lot of support groups um, all over the country, all over the world, right? Um, my, my main focus is more on a process that I took myself through that I call the reset process. And that's what I coach people through. Mm. Um, it's a five-step process that I took myself from being at a point five years ago where I wanted to take my life to being where I am now and how I pulled myself out of that. And, um, and, you know, five years ago, I remember sitting there feeling like I, my future was so uncertain and I was kind of looking at a blank canvas and I didn't know the next steps to take or I didn't know um, what the future held and it was very scary. And so 
this five-step process I want to start training people on or teaching people to kind of help bring them through what I went through um, is what's going to be my main focus right now. And then the community will be built from that. That's fantastic. So it sounds like people could, you know, um, obviously still benefit from their in-person groups. And this would be an additional layer that yes. you recommend um, for that type of support. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And that's nice that anybody from anywhere in the world could participate. So there's, you know, no reason for anyone to not uh, to participate. And that's exciting. And I appreciate your sharing so much of, you know, what you've been through and how you're, you know, really paying this forward for other people. I think that's incredible. And so I'd love to hear what are those wellness tips that you would like to, to share with everyone today? Well, I've got three main tips that I like to speak about. Um, one is, this is probably my favorite one, is progress over perfection. Mm. Because a lot of times when you are battling cancer and you're kind of going through that journey, there's so much focus on what it is that you can't do yeah. um, and how limited you are. And I feel like if we could just shift our focus to those things that we can do each day, those little small changes, yeah. then we'll start to see dramatic results in our life. And there's a book um, that I read that I suggest to everybody. It's called Atomic Habits. Oh. Um, and it's by James Clear. And he has a saying in here that, um, and I'm just going to read this quote from the book. He says, too often we convince ourselves that massive success requires massive action. It's so easy to overestimate the importance of one defining moment and underestimate the value of making small improvements on a daily basis. Yeah. And I think at least it was this way for me, and I feel like it's this way for a lot, is that we always wait until, you know, um, we're officially released from the doctors or we're officially cancer-free or it's, you know, our five-year anniversary or one-year anniversary or whatever. We wait for these monumental dates and, and before we start to actually take action to improve our lives. And I think if we could just focus on the things we can do. Mm -hmm. And a, a quick story is I started running, uh, I guess it's been two years now. And when I first started running, <laughs> I was, um, I, I, I could only really run about a mile nonstop at that point. And I remember one day I got up and I was just so, I've got a lot of joint pain and that type of thing. And I just didn't really feel like running, but I knew I had to if I, in order for me to get better. And so I remember running through my neighborhood and the whole time I'm like out of breath and I, and it, everything is hard. And I'm actually yelling at myself as I'm running through the neighborhood. So I'm sure neighbors were like, that girl is totally crazy. Like, because I'm actually at this point, I'm actually cursing because I'm like, I don't want to do this. This is really, this sucks and blah, blah, blah. And then when I got to the mile, my, my watch would notify me when I got to a mile and all of a sudden I looked down and I actually ran the fastest mile I had run yet. It was like, it was like a 930 pace. And, and I, I, even to this day, I have a struggle at a 930 pace. Like I, I think that's probably one out of three times of the time I've been running that I've gotten a pace of 930. But the point is, is that I spent all that time focusing on the negative that I was missing the progress that I was making. Mm. Right. And mm. so once I started to see the progress, then all of a sudden my mind shifted. And then I was like, oh, you know, it's like, oh, look at me go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it was like an instant. And so I just think if we could focus on those little small wins along the way, and then we'll start, once we see the progress, then we'll, we'll start to see those results in our life. So that's the first thing. Nice. Um, the second thing is fear. Um, I wanted to talk about fear for a moment because I know as a cancer survivor, fear of recurrence is a major, major fear. Yeah. And, it's, and it's crippling, um, quite actually, because, you know, you'd be sitting there and you have a brand new sensation in your body and you're like, oh, what was that? You know? And, um, and so I also 
read this book. It's called Feel, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan what? Jeffers. Yes, I have that book. That's awesome. Right? <laughs> yes. That's so great. I wanted to point something out that this book pointed out that I think is huge when it comes to fear. So um, she says that there's actually um, three levels of fear right? The first level is kind of the surface story, which is really about those things um, that require, it's, it's like, it's a passive fear. So it might be something like fear of dying or fear of being alone. Um, there's also the active fears, which requires some type of action, like fear of public speaking and that type of thing. So we've got like this surface fear that we all have a bunch of that, right? Mm -hmm. Then then there's the level two fear, which is the, the, the inner self type of fears. These are the self doubts and, you know, what if I fail and, um, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, I'm afraid of getting a no if you're in sales or fear of rejection, you know, those types of things. But then very rarely do we ever get to what she says is level three, which is actually the, the foundation of all our fear. Mm. Level three is is the fear that I can't handle it. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. so, you know, she goes on to talk about how every fear, if you ever break it down, it's always, the fear is always a result of something that you feel like you can't handle. Like if I fail, how am I going to be able to, to, you know, face my family or my friends, or how am I going to be able to handle if I get rejected or, you know, how am I going to be able to handle you know, losing, you know, you know, this special person or, you know, all those things. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and the same thing goes with fear of recurrence. I think the biggest fear is, is how will I handle it if it comes back? Because, yeah. you know, the first round of it was so difficult, you know, you start to wonder, will I be able to do it again? Yeah. And I think that that's the basis of the fear. And, she goes on to say in order to kind of combat that is to kind of turn it around and say, okay, if you turn it around and you say, if I, if there wasn't anything that I couldn't handle, then what would I fear? Mm -hmm. And the answer would be nothing. Right? right. So if you have a fear, no matter what it is, if you turn it around and you ask yourself, what would I do to handle it? Then you have like a game plan in place. And it makes that fear less frightening. I mean, the fear will always exist, but it won't overcome your life and overwhelm your life if you go, I can handle this, you know. And I don't know if this will come across the wrong way, but I guess that you lead from experience. If it were to ever come back, one, you'll know what it's going to be like because the first time you go through it, you don't have a clue what's, what it's going to be like. But if it were to come back, you would be able to handle it because you already know what it's going to be like and your family already knows. And so you already have that support in place to, to handle it. So it's not that I would ever want that to happen, but if you could just kind of, you know, switch it just a little bit, um, it might help with that fear. Absolutely. And then the last thing is negative thoughts. Um, this is from a book by Dr. Daniel Amen, Change Your Brain, Change Your Life. And he talks about what he calls ants, automatic negative thoughts. You know, those, you know, you could be doing something and all of a sudden it's that self-talk, right, that you have in your head that says, oh my God. You're, you know, you're too stupid to do this or, you know, or whatever that thought is that comes into to your mind. Um, he talks about how to overcome or quiet those negative thoughts. And the first thing he says to do is to write all that negative thoughts that you have to write it down. And this is something that I do all the time. As soon as I start to experience negative thoughts, I get out a piece of paper and I literally write everything that I'm feeling at that moment because I need to get it out of my head because if I let it sit in there, it festers too long. So I'll just write it all down. And sometimes I just throw it away or I rip it up or whatever, but I write it down. Then the next thing he says to do is ask yourself, 
with, is it absolutely true with 100% certainty? Whatever negative thought you have, is it true? You know, is this something that actually would happen if it's like a, if it's a, a negative thought about the future or whatever, or if it's a negative thought about, you know, a spouse or about yourself, ask yourself, is it true? Especially when you're asking about thoughts about yourself, because I also think that we don't give ourselves enough credit. Yeah. And so if we ask ourselves if this is true, you could think of a million stories to counter whether or not if that, that negative thought you have about yourself is true. True. Right. And so then he goes on to say, you know, ask yourself, how do I feel when I believe this thought? And how would I feel if I didn't believe this thought? But I think the biggest point is, is when you have those negative thoughts that kind of take over, write it down and then ask yourself if it's true and then come up with all the stories as the reason why it's not true. Mm -hmm. And I think that that kind of um, will take that negative thought and, and if you do those things, you'll actually find that, hey, you know, I really am, you know, whatever the opposite is of that thought. So those are my three tips. I love it. I love it. Those are great. Absolutely fantastic and actionable, you know, layers that people can implement right away. Um, and I'm sure as you've experienced, you know, sometimes people have to practice some of these multiple times before it like sinks in. I think that's, uh, you know, something for people to be aware of, but I love these, I love these tips and you do so much for so many people. It's, it's fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, which brings me to something else that I wanted to ask you about. Um, yeah. I understand you are a calendar girl. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and can you tell the super women what that means and, and a little bit about, um, you know, what your goal is behind being a calendar girl this year? Well, so I belong to a support group called Here for the Girls. And this organization is a nonprofit that provides support services to women who are, who've been diagnosed with cancer under the age of 51. And so they provide services as, such as support groups and they um, provide services like uh, we do a retreat every year and then they have like little events and stuff that they do throughout the year. We have runs and all this kind of thing. But the idea is that we're so much more than our breasts. And so it's all about honoring women and, and their individuality and um, again, providing them those, those fun experiences while they're going through the journey or after they're gone through the journey. And um, I've been part of the organization for about two years now. And so last year I applied to be a calendar model. It's their biggest fundraiser of the year. And uh, I got accepted and I was Miss June. And um, I actually got to choose my month. Um, June was the month that I was told by my ex-husband that he wanted a divorce. Mm. It was also the month my mom died, and it was also the month that um, I thought I wanted to take my life. So I thought I feel like June is my independence month. Yeah, I feel like that was when my old self was freed, and then that's where I kind of turned everything around. And so I don't know. I, I'm assuming everyone will be watching in the video, but I'll show you. So this is the calendar. So this is the cover of the calendar. So I'm June of 2021, and we had to do this virtually um, because of the pandemic. We couldn't even do our photo shoot. So all these photos in this calendar are selfies that we took. Or I say selfies. Um, I mean, we might have had a friend take them of us, but they were pretty much with our phones, our, with our you know, our iPhones, <laughs> you know? And um, so you know, it helps if I can figure out where I am. So here I am as Miss June. Nice. Yeah. And um, inside this calendar is also a health and wellness guide that mm -hmm. we have, um, which is, it's awesome. It gives you some tips for caregivers and tips for women that are newly diagnosed. Nice. So this is a huge benefit of the calendar. Yeah. So, um, 
we all had a goal of three to raise three thousand um, dollars by the end of the year and i'm about six hundred dollars away from that goal sweet yep and the calendars are ten dollars a minimum donation of ten dollars but i only have 30 calendars left so okay. <laughs> so um eventually the organization will start selling them on their website but by the end of the year it's all done through the models and the calendars that they that they were given so but nice. that's where we are this was just launched a month ago so congratulations I'm excited about it yeah that's fantastic wow <clears throat> what else <laughs> you do so many things i it's just uh, incredible and and i love again how you're um taking you know what your experience and everything that you went through and really helping to share that um those systems the you said the five steps to reset is that correct mm -hmm. yep and then at the same time while you're doing that i know you, there's other things you have on your plate but then you're also the calendar girl and and uh doing some fundraising it's a uh, it's just you have a lot to be proud of, just uh, something I feel like I have to share with you. You know, this like huge kudos to you for, for everything that you're doing. I think that's absolutely uh, incredible. Well, thank you. You know, I just feel like it's, it's, you know, I'm a woman of faith and I just feel like God is guiding me down this path. You know, I've been a business coach for 11 years. And so that's kind of where the coaching piece kind of evolved from. Yeah. And I remember when I was going through my worst time, I remember thinking to myself, okay, I coach business owners all the time through their mental blocks that they have. And mm. I had to think to myself, like, how would I coach myself through all this? Yeah. And so, and that's kind of how it all evolved. And, and God is working in mysterious ways, like he always does. And Yes. It's really been a blessing. Absolutely. No, I think that's fantastic. So if there's a uh, super women out there that are resonating uh, with different aspects of what you've, you know, shared with everyone today, what's the best way um, for them to either get on your, you know, newsletter or how do they find you on social media? What's the best way to connect with you um, these days? Well, right now, um, I'm working on my Footloose and Cancer Free website. Um, it was just a blog, but now I'm turning it into a, an actual website because I'm also launching my reset guide uh, and, and video trainings. So um, that will launch by, by Monday. So um, as far as how you can get in contact with me, my email is kathy at footloosecancerfree.com. And Kathy is spelled with a K, K A T H Y. For social media, but loose and cancer free, it's my Instagram handle, and you can also find a Facebook um, group, but loose and cancer free as well. And so that's kind of where I am in social media. But you can always email me at Kathy at footloose and cancer free dot com, and I can answer any questions that you might have and share with you what it is that I'm doing. Okay, great. And what is that website going to be? Because I know some people may be watching this video, you know, in, in months ahead, <laughs> and your website will already be up. What will that link be? Uh, Footloosecancerfree.com. Okay, fantastic. And then we'll definitely put your, uh, all of those uh, media links uh, below in the description, as well as a little bit more information about you in case anybody wants to, to learn a little bit more, as well as the donation link and the ability to reach out if they're interested, who, those who are locally, um, who are interested in getting a calendar. Unless, can calendars be mailed? I wasn't sure how that works. Yeah, I can mail them. If okay. Calendar. Okay, great. So you can get a calendar from anywhere. <laughs> Fantastic. Absolutely. And so is there anything else that you would like to share uh, with the super women who are watching today before I let you go? The only thing I, that I would want to share is just letting them know that they're not alone, right, mm -hmm. in this journey. And I think that this journey is meant to be walked with others. And so that's really, and that, and you're stronger than you realize probably be the two big things that I'd like to, to leave with. 
Nice. Yeah, those are powerful. I feel like we have to take it like a moment of silence for everybody to just kind of <laughs> digest that, right? Because that's, that's huge. Uh, that is, and that goes along with the, the negative self-talk and, you know, kind of retraining our brain to, uh, you know, understand those different uh, layers. So thank you. So thank you so much for being here with us today, for sharing your wisdom. And um, I'm just so excited to see how all of this unfolds over the next few months for you. Thank you so much for having me on here. I was so excited to reconnect with you. Likewise. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.